Why do all cops sit in the back of the room? That's a good question. It's like traffic court. Everyone's in traffic court. Yeah. Um, Anyone else? Chief Bill? I'm sorry. Please. You, you probably noticed that we have, uh, on our panel, we have uh, two ladies and one man, uh, sometimes referred to as a uh, thorn between two roses. <laughs> um, but... Oh! Oh! I'm going to start... Oh, Rose! <laughs> <Mr. Patrick. laughs> As a fellow commissioner, I get away with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but but yeah. I've got to believe in today's environment, although our society has become uh, increasingly more sensitive to the issue of, especially in the fields of law enforcement, to a certain degree, the field of education, where it's a male-dominated workforce. Um, I, I, I'd love to hear from you ladies about this whole issue of leadership, uh, leading through crisis, but probably more importantly, just leading when you happen to be a woman. I'm older, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, for perhaps some of you have, have seen the full evolution of women in law enforcement and in non-traditional occupations for women. Uh, over the years, how uh, from the early 70s, late 60s, that has changed and, and evolved. It's certainly changed in the educational area. Uh, but in the, in the service professions, um, you see a lot of uh, women, law enforcement um, is, is, is a very good example of a place where there was open opportunity for women to get in on the ground floor, to be officers and so forth, and then to, to work their way up. Um, the thing that I felt about leadership, and, and because I became a leader in, in my own you know, organization, is that credibility of your personality, of your abilities, is, is key. Uh, I, I would couple that with your, your ethical um, background and your integrity, of course. But you have to do all of the positions in an organization to maintain some cred credibility, or at least most of those positions. You've got to understand what people do, I think, in order to, to really have, have an understanding to lead them. And uh, while gender, of course, you know, is always, it's always there. I didn't switch or anything like that. But I, I, uh, I think that, I always approach things as the mission being first. You know, it was my responsibility to, whether it was to lead a squad, to uh, lead a group of squads, to lead a field office, to lead um, major divisions and so forth. Focusing on the job and doing the best that you can, that, that was the issue. The issue to me, you know, wasn't, wasn't gender related. That didn't mean, and I wasn't, naive to this, that, that for some people it was kind of a shock to be working, you know, in a non-traditional or a traditionally male occupation, all of a sudden you're working, working for a woman. Um, you work through those things because of how you do your job, and, and that was the bottom line. Uh, and uh, hopefully I had more successes than, than not. Right. Colleen? I, I can tell you I... I have never personally experienced a, um, an overt, um, uh, any kind of action towards me because I was a female that would be, um, that would contradict my ability to get promoted through the department or be respected in amongst the law enforcement community that I've, I've worked in or I worked in for 35 years. Um, I agree, I think it's about who you are, it's about your work ethic, it's how you conduct yourself. It's knowing where your weaknesses are and knowing where your strengths are and be willing to be a part of the team and fill in the gaps, not trying to be something you're not, um, not trying to be the biggest, baddest person in the room, or maybe even when you're not, um, then your language or your demeanor would try to overcompensate for something that you feel not very confident about yourself or your self-esteem is just not there. Um, I think it just goes to who you are and knowing what you can contribute, being the best that you can be so that when it's your turn to be ready or you have to protect your partner or you've got to jump a wall, that you're capable of doing it. When you have to be prepared and armed with budget numbers for your chief, 
Um, you got to be sitting there ready when the chief turns around. You have the answer. And that takes time and effort. And that's how you get to where I think some of those positions are. Um, it just takes hard work and um, and a good work ethic and uh, your kind of your your nose to the grindstone. I think that's really what it is. I, I just would add that it, based on both what we've said, uh, those characteristics aren't gender specific, chief. Specific no. chief. Those go those go to everybody. Yep. The credibility, the integrity, how you model yourself for your employees and your colleagues. Chief, do you want to comment? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't th I think I'll leave it at that. Okay, good, thank you.